afternoon, UCA gente. Um, this is Monica Byrne Jimenez. I'm a member of the UCA Executive Committee and past president. I'm happy to be talking today with Dr. Judy Alston, Professor of Educational Leadership and Chair of the Department of Doctoral Studies and Advanced Programs at Ashland University. I had invited Dr. Alston to come talk to us today because she's had some experience um, traveling to Cuba um, to look at educational systems and schools there. And since UCEA is planning a trip to Cuba in March of 2018, who better to talk to than someone who has already been there? So I've asked Dr. Alston to come and you know share with us her experiences, what she learned, um, and just her general thoughts about her trip to Cuba and, and um, see what kinds of questions I can come up with that will help you decide whether or not to join our trip in March. So Dr. Alston, can you tell me, I don't know, just a little bit about what made you interested in going to Cuba? Uh, well, first, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Glad to be able to talk about um, this trip. Um, going to Cuba, I actually, it's, it's been a long time coming. Um, I wanted, I've wanted to go to Cuba since the third grade. Um, <laughs> and um, my Spanish teacher, I went to Catholic school for 12 years. Uh, and so we had Spanish uh second i took spanish second to eighth grade uh and my spanish teacher um uh was from cuba and she made it she you know at that time i mean she came over during all of the 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 issues uh so she came over in the in the 50s um and so with the upheaval in cuba she got out before things really went awry and so she had um, um, a memory of Cuba that was, when she would talk about it, was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and so I always wanted to go. And, um, and when I decided to go back to school in, uh, what was that, 2012, and I decided to go back and, and work on a Master's of Divinity, um, I still wanted to go. And I knew that all of the students who completed a Master's of Divinity program, um, had to participate in a cross-cultural experience. And it just so happened that the cross-cultural experience that they had, one, one of the trips available was to Cuba. And I went, well, look at God, I can go to Cuba finally. Uh, and so, um, so we planned that trip. And so at that, the, the impetus for going to Cuba started probably uh, third grade, that's probably 1973, uh, something like 73, 74, 72, 73. So it's been a long time. Um, it was a long time coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, and here, here's, here's the funny part. Um, I uh, found my old Spanish teacher on Facebook uh, and I uh, told her that I went to Cuba and she hadn't, you know, she does, she's not one of those people who checks her Facebook often. <laughs> so. I sent her a message saying I was going and almost a year later after I had gone she got she finally checked her Facebook message and she went oh my god I can't believe you went to Cuba and she talked about her home uh, and I sent her some of the pictures uh, that I took while I was there so it was it was like a full circle moment that's amazing yeah 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 it was so what were some of the things, I guess, some of the outstanding memories or experiences that you have from that trip? Oh, uh, you know, I think the thing that stands out the most um, is, you know, in preparation for going, of course, we were going, I was going um, as a part of uh, fulfilling the coursework in the Master of Divinity program at Methodist Theological School in Ohio. And so we went um, as a class, it was about, I think it was 11 of us. Uh, plus the professor uh, and her husband, who was an adjunct professor, who was actually born in Cuba. Um, and so we had we done some study prior to going, reading. Uh, and But, you know, people will often say, oh, you know, you're going to Cuba. This is the thing I heard a lot. You're going to Cuba. You know, all they want to do is leave. They want to leave and come to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always find that very interesting that, that people think that uh, somebody just wants to leave their homeland to come to the United States. And we can have a whole nother conversation about that. But um, <laughs> what the thing that struck me the most when I was in Cuba was that, number one, the people are absolutely beautiful in terms of their spirit. Um, 
just welcoming, um, kind, loving. I mean, they're people of the Caribbean um, and you feel that. Uh, and how about, they're not trying to leave. They just wanna make the island better. <laughs> That's really it. That's the thing that struck me the most that the, the folks weren't trying, it's not, you know, they want to be able to travel freely to other countries, but they want to go back home, much like us. You know, I want to be able to travel freely and come back to these United States of America um, mm -hmm. because this is where I'm from. Um, but that really struck me and that, 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 um, that sense of belonging to that space, the love that they have for their homeland, it is, it's constantly, you see that all the time. You feel it, uh, it's very palpable. Um, and it's, it was just, that, I think that's the thing that really, that really struck me, um, that, that folks love their land, they love their people, and that's where they want to be. Um, now, we did have some meetings with a lot of um, uh, various governmental officials, uh, uh, religious officials. Uh, we did not get the opportunity to to go to a school. We were supposed to, but I forgot, uh, something happened with the schedule. It was it was a jam packed schedule that we had for those uh, almost two weeks. Uh, and the one thing, one of the things that stuck out was an economist who said, "What we don't want here is the McDonaldization of Cuba." Yes, we want. Um, Americans, uh, folks from the United States of America, I should say, to come visit, be a part. Uh, we want um, the economic piece, uh, the connections. We want companies coming, but we don't want a Starbucks on every corner and we don't want a, a, a McDonald's on every corner. We still want to hold on to who we are, um, even though, you know, we want to, we want to be, we want to advance economically and socially as well. Uh, so th that was another thing that, that hit me while I was there. And um, because, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to, there's a lot of development that can happen there because it is such a blank canvas in terms of being stuck in a particular time and um, not having their infrastructure has, um, has is not, not solid. So, the opportunities to to go over and um, people will have jobs to be able to build and to be able to work uh, would be a great thing for that country as well as other countries, I think, too. Wow. Um, I know I know that you have a couple of pictures to share with us, so maybe you could just sort of scroll through and tell us a little bit sure. about each one. So the first picture that you see right there is a mural of Che Guevara. Um, we went out, I think our first night in um, Havana. Uh, we pronounce it Havana, but of course it, they always, they spell it with a B too, Havana. Uh, and there was a mural uh, because of course he is a hero to, to many people there. Uh, and so we were just kind of hanging out one evening and I was able to grab this shot here. Um, and we, like I said, we were, we were in old Havana, so we we're in the old city. Um, then there is a, a picture of, and I can't remember the name of this beautiful church. Wow. Absolutely. I mean, and it's, it was pitch dark out and, you know, we've got lights and it, it just got, I just got a really good picture of this church. Um, but, it, you know, the old Havana is like, um, it's, it's kind of, it, it was walled off at one point, but it's got a lot of that, uh, a lot of alleys and little byways and so it's a lot of squares every now and then you walk down an alley and then it just opens up into a square or you open up and there'll be a church or another building so this was a, one of the beautiful churches uh, that i was able to to get a, a nice picture of one evening um this is i want to say i should have looked this up because i can't remember from last year i think it's a saber tree s-a-b-o-r if i'm if, if i'm correct on that um but you know we they talk a lot about um the santerian uh mm -hmm. religions um and this is one of those trees that is vital to um to that to to those religions um because it's not just one religion uh it's many many sects within there 
Uh, but this is one of the trees where people will go and um, offer sacrifices. Uh, this one just happened not to have anything around it. But if you will, as when you go, you'll see other trees that you you can barely get close to because there's so much there's so much stuff that people have left to sacrifice uh, at at the at the tree. Um, so if you get the opportunity to to take a tour uh, and and really get the history of Santeria that was an education in itself. And we actually went into the home of, um, of, of one of the, of a Santerian priest um, and, and saw the altar that he had in his home. We went into a couple of homes actually. So that was just really, that really touched my heart a lot there um, in, in talking about, particularly the connection to Africa and bringing um, Africans over uh, over to Cuba and um, in in the slave in the enslavement of Africans and and what they did while they were in Cuba. Um, this is a, this is another square. Uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph is it Joseph Marti, mm -hmm. um, who is another political figure, major political figure in Cuba, uh, and there is this. Um, this hanging, this 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 art hanging of him, and then when you pan around, there's a, a, a one of Che Guevara, and another one of Castro. So it's kind of awesome to stand in the middle and kind of pan your camera around uh, to see all of this um, all of this history. Uh, but it's also a, a very political area, uh, governmental buildings uh, that these are on. Um, now I, I included this picture here because this this may be hopefully an opportunity that you guys will get to to go when we went we stayed at the king well we we did a lot of work at the martin luther king jr center um they actually have an ebenezer baptist church there and the ebenezer baptist church in uh the in atlanta dr king's church um is the sister church to the one that's in Cuba. Uh, and they are there as a, the center is a, as a center for social justice. And so they do a lot of uh, work in the community. Um, the church is there as well, people worship there, but the, the center actually is a, has a dormitory where people stay, they come, they have meetings. We ate uh, pretty much all of our major meals there while we were in Havana. Um, and we initially were to stay there, but because another group was also traveling, I don't know, I don't know if it was people, people or another group, but they, uh, they had some, um, some college students who they got the, um, they got the opportunity to stay at the center, which actually worked out better for us because then we actually stayed with, um, sort of like bed and breakfast type thing. So we stayed with a family um, uh, who had a, a beautiful home and we just had the opportunity to have relationship with, uh, with that family um, as well. And, and, and it really, it worked out well because where we stayed, my roommate and I, we were right a court, around, around the corner from the center. Um, but the cent uh, Dr. King uh, means a lot to people in Cuba. Uh, so if you get the opportunity to go visit the center, uh, it, it, it will be worth your time. Um, this was a picture of the Museum of Revolution, uh, which you probably will get the opportunity to go to. I didn't include many of the pictures from there. So I had a lot of pictures from the museum. And I figure if you're going, you just need to go and see the museum itself. This was actually the building where, um, the dictator was shot there, and when you uh, when you go, you will see the um, the bullet holes. So one of my favorite movies is um, The Godfather, mm -hmm. and <laughs> in I know right. So in in is it The Godfather Two um, when uh, Michael Corleone goes to Cuba because they're you know they're trying to do some hookups and and um, some underhanded stuff and get money and build casinos. Uh, when he and, and he, he, the revolution is about to take place and um, he's trying to get out of the country. So 
uh, the president is shot and it was in this actual building that the president was shot. Uh, this was the, the, the president's palace at the time. Uh, so it's, it's pretty awesome when you go in there. Um, now this, you know, you don't have to go shopping, of course, right? Um, <laughs> Everybody who knows me knows I'm going to get some shopping in. Uh, now, while, while I didn't find any shoes that I wanted, I did find a couple of other things. Um, the we went to uh, and let me, and I'm gonna switch the picture and then I'll go back. We went to Varadero, and Varadero is a beach town. And when I and I have been to beaches all around the United States and some beaches across the this across the world. Uh, this hands down is the best beach I've ever stepped foot on. The sand was like uh, powdered sugar. Uh, it was so awesome. We stayed in Varadero for about three or four days. We stayed at a Presbyterian church uh, that actually had a, a dormitory uh, style living as well. Now I haven't slept in a, in a bunk bed in a hundred years, but, <laughs> but I did while we while we stayed there, um, but we were steps away from the beach. They had hotels on the beach, but it was just so beautiful uh, there. Uh, the food was great. Uh, we had the we, there was a great club while we were there as well. But this, I'll go back to this. This is as you as you walk down the strip, like any you know major beach town. I grew up in in Charleston, South Carolina, fifteen minutes from Folly Beach. So Folly Beach, Myrtle Beach those types of beach towns all have, you know, the little stores up and down the strip. So the same thing in Varadero, there's a little little mall type, little malls um, that you can go in and buy um, handmade crafts and, and whatnot. So that's, that's what this picture is right there. Um, there is a famous Cuban artist and I cannot think of his name, um, probably should have prepared better before I got out here. Uh, but he um, has a lot of uh, the art that he's done. There's a particular neighborhood in, um, in Havana. Uh, and so this was one of, one of his pieces here. But as you, if you walk throughout the neighborhood, there are, I don't know, 20 or 30 um, pieces that, that he's done, just major, just major art that's absolutely beautiful. Um, nice walking tour to be able to do that. Um, if you if you get the chance for that. Oh, laser. Oh, my so, God. Laser. Oh, my God. Yeah, see, right. So where was the uh, the rumba originated in Cuba? And this was one of the original um, dance halls. Uh, and it's over in a section because it's a part of it is is very African. And so where uh, where, where more of your Black Cubans live, um, you, uh, we were over there and, and, and uh, we, we had a, a tour, uh, that was the tour about Santeria and, the, uh, and, and, and this dance hall was there. And so he talked about the history of, of Rumba and, um, and, and it was just, we didn't get a chance to go in, but I just wanted to, to make sure that I at least got a picture of that spot. And hopefully when I go back, I'll be able to, to go over and go in and maybe maybe get my dance on a little bit. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like fun. <laughs> I think that was, so yeah, I think that was, that was, those are all the pictures. I have a bunch of pictures. I was just trying to figure out how many I could like fit in uh, <laughs> just for, for here. Uh, this, this was another picture. Um, uh, the you know, talking about the revolution and uh, Guevara and um, and and uh, Castro. Um, mm -hmm. There's also the boat that they actually that Castro and Guevara were were on, the yacht. Uh, they actually have that. You can you can't stand on it, but they have um, it's glass in case, so you can go and actually see it and take pictures of it and, and the trucks and the, the armor and all of that good stuff. Um, it was just, it was an awesome experience. It was, it was for those, for those almost two weeks, just very enlightening and um, just learned a lot. I just really learned a lot about, about Cuba. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm
Um, Say that again. Okay. No, I think we're good. Um, I was wondering if there was anything that you wish you had paid more attention to while you were there, or had well, had, a, had, a, had had a chance to engage in. I I really wish that I had more of the opportunity to engage in really what was going on in education. Mm -hmm. um, like being, actually being able to go, we passed through uh, a couple of the universities. We kind of went through, but we, we didn't stop. I wanted to be able to get out and, and have conversations with students to see what, what it's like to, to be a student in Cuba at all levels. You know, I saw, I saw the, the children um, dressed and in, in, in going to school but we didn't get an opportunity to actually go into one of the schools. I wish I'd had that opportunity. That would have really um, covered all the bases for me in terms of, of, of what I wanted to wanted to learn. Now we did get the opportunity. Having said that, uh, because I was in seminary, we did go to a seminary in Matanzas, uh, and that was um, an eye-opening experience. First of all. Uh, my seminary here in, in Central Ohio is absolutely beautiful. I mean, you, when I go up there, the campus is gorgeous. But this seminary in Matanzas, let me tell you, it sits up on the hill, and when you look over the hill, you see the Caribbean Ocean. So it, it you know, hands down, it, it wins. Mm -hmm. um, but the views from the from that seminary are absolutely awesome. Um, and but learning what the students have been struggling with in terms of issues of inclusion and oppression and uh, marginalization uh you know the lgbt students at the at the seminary and they actually formed a group um and they in the the seminary uh, administration told them okay well the lgb students can come and talk to the group that's coming in but no transgender student can come on campus today so yeah, you know, I, I really wanted to to know more about that, but that was that was really really quite interesting. Uh, so I wish I had the opportunity to to delve much more deeply into what's going on in education, because as you know, education there is free. Um, right. the college is is free. So, for example, the family that we stayed with, um, the wife is had is actually a dentist. She went to undergraduate she went to to dental school and she's a dentist however the problem the economic problem in cuba is that there are no jobs for her as a dentist so she has to figure out something else to do and so her her main job is that she's a beautician and and she has a beauty shop in her home and now they're into sort of this bed and breakfast kind of rental thing um her husband was a um he was a server at a restaurant uh and they're they, they have different levels of restaurants in cuba they have uh they have um public and private uh so the public restaurants are really the the majority of them and they're owned by the government but now they're starting to allow people to to own their own restaurants so there are more and more private restaurants opening and mm -hmm. in the private restaurants if you're a server you have the opportunity to make more money so he was he was working at a private restaurant but I believe he said he was trained uh, as some type of um, as some type of engineer, uh, but there are no jobs. Uh, so you know, so you you, you kind of you, you. I just really wanted to know more about this education, uh, and the and uh, also the um, the medical piece um, because they they have some, you know, the the med med medicine uh, the it's free. Um, so everybody gets their education. Everybody is taken care of in terms of their health. Plus, they get us. Everybody gets a stipend every month as well. Um, now, that doesn't mean that that stipend lasts because we did talk to some people about you know making ends meet. Um, but you know, it's not like they have to go. They go to the doctor and they have to pay out of pocket. No, it's 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 included. It's a part of of who they are, uh, and the and their their medical care is top notch it is absolutely top notch um and thinking about your experiences there and coming back to the u.s and you know maybe there was some culture shock or something coming back um 
how do you think that experience has informed the way that you think about your work um, or do your work? I think what the experience has done for me has really um, um, fortified my de my desire to be authentic. Um, fortified um, my desire to be not only authentic in my walk but also in my work because that's what I saw in Cuba. I saw people walking in their authenticity. Um, people that I that I spoke with, um, they were. This is it. This is who I am. I'm unapologetic and I'm doing this unashamedly. Uh, and so that really spoke to me on a deeper level that how I'm doing what I'm doing is is right. Um, and and that really fortified me to continue to to do that work. When I when we we spoke to the there was a young man who took us on the the Santeria tour, um, and he's a he's a historian. He actually he's a doctoral student as well. And um, just listening to him really um, run the history down from the beginning to where they are now in 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 um, and, and what it means to be uh, a black Cuban or, or mixed, um, it, just, it just really spoke to me on a different level. And so uh, I really connected with that and I connected that back to what I do uh, and the work that I do in understanding that it really is a value and that it's needed and it has to be it's got to be said. So, and if somebody's going to do it, it might as well be me. I mean, that's incredibly powerful. So, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, any final thoughts um, before I let you go? Uh, if you have the opportunity to go, go. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a, it, it for me. It was a bucket list trip, um, but it. Initially, it started off as a bucket list trip, I should say that, but it has become so much more because it really, um, it really connected in my spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, I told my wife, I said, we're going back to Cuba, uh, or I'm taking you to Cuba. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I'm going back uh, because it just really spoke to me. Uh, and so I think it's, it's just an opportunity that if, if, you, if you can afford it, uh, that you should take the opportunity and go. You will not regret it. One, the one of the things that I didn't and I should have included this picture is that I, you know, of course I love music and one of my favorite bands of all time is the Buena Vista Social Club, mm -hmm. and I had the opportunity to actually see them in person and take a a picture uh, with one of the elders of the group, and it was. Once once I saw them, I was done. I was like, yeah, I can go home now. I've, I've lived. I don't need anything else. Um, but it was just it was it was just awesome. It really was. So if you, if you get the opportunity to go, go. Right. That's I think that's that's the final thing. Right. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Austin. Again, I appreciate your time and sharing your experiences with us. Um, if you're listening and you have any questions about um, our planned trip to Cuba in March, um, the best place to start is our website, ucecuba2018.com. That's all one word, except for the dot .com. Um, or if you have any specific questions, you can contact UCEA at UCEA at virginia.edu. Um, the website has a proposed itinerary, passport, um, you know, um, uh, requirements and all of that. So it, it's a there's lots of information about our trip on the UCEA Cuba 2018.com website. Dr. Olson, thank you so much again. I can't wait to see you at UCEA in Denver. Yes, um, and for everyone else, look you we'll see you in Denver and hopefully we'll see you in Cuba. Thank you so much and goodbye.